Drugs are fucking fun, pal. Factor that fucking in. To your drug of fucking fence of type. Health fucking warning. There ain't a lot that's fun, pal. Old age and school and dreams of a life that will never be. Sexless nights, wasted schemes. Your horizon still receding. Speeding home. That's fruitless, some cliff and skidding, then descent to twisted rest. So, uh, hi everyone. Um, so, basically, like fucking four months ago, maybe longer than that, uh, Rafe. From uh, Faces and Feels and me had a, a chat uh, podcast thing, um, and uh, I I got I got quite drunk. Rafe got a bit drunk. Um, I was ever so slightly more drunk, but anyway. But we recorded this thing like months and months ago, and uh, basically we we're going to release it together as like a joint thing. Bleeding gums, Faces and Feels. Hopefully, do more when I'm like slightly more sober. But anyway, I was like, we've recorded it anyway um, months ago, so why not? We'll just put it out. Um, so. I did have, like, video footage of it, but for some reason my PC's a piece of shit and stuff, so Rafe still got the audio footage, so I was like, right, okay, I'll do something in the background, um, so you can see my cat, and you can also see something else in the background, hopefully my cat doesn't knock them off the fucking couch, anyway, so in the background of this, um, because I'm gonna have to do it anyway, I thought, I'll just put, like, a little clip thing up in the corner, here, maybe, um, of me cleaning, and then building some fucking light tube bundles, what way should I go, this way? You see me that way? I've got like, so, there's 35 light tubes there that I need to clean, um, because please, if you're going to get second hand, or even like brand new light tubes, please disinfect them, uh, clean them, because um, you don't want people getting nasty, horrible cuts and infections, you know, deathmatch wrestling's dangerous enough as it is, but anyway, so I'm going to sit and clean these light tubes in the background of this video while me and Rafe uh, have some beers, and I think I'd had like, Something stupid, I was drinking like lychee liqueurs or something as well, and I'm probably very, very drunk by the end of it, but anyway, who cares? Faces and feels and bleeding gums, uh, why well, clean some light tubes and build some bundles? Hey, I might even build a Tokyo Tower, who fucking knows, I'll even be able to see it on camera. Anyway, uh, now I will venture in to this. Oh. <laughs> Something to fucking stop the flow of light tubes. <sighs> it is what's up, and welcome everyone to Faces and Feels and Bleeding Gums. We don't know what the fuck we're doing tonight. Me and Andrew have been hanging out. We're drinking a few beers. We don't even know which show we're doing, but we've got a bunch of questions we're going to ask each other, and we're hanging out. Nope. Tell me we'll, what's we'll, up, we'll my man. We'll yeah, we'll figure it out. Fuck, who cares? <laughs> How you going? Yeah, 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 oh man, I know everything's good. Everything's good. Love, loving the dream. Uh, waiting for Rise next month. Yes. Patiently for the next fucking UK death match show. Yeah. I was meant to be at uh, the TNT stuff, but yeah. like there was like family problems and things happened, yeah. and I couldn't get down. I was meant to be at the Kumite and stuff and that, but I couldn't get down. So now I'm just patiently waiting on Rise so I can actually go and see another show. So I've got like a month where I've got nothing. So Absolutely. It's, which is actually quite nice. It's yeah. Quite yeah. nice. Exactly. <laughs> Well, I'm the same. I'm getting pretty close now uh, to ICW No Holds Barred invading Melbourne, Australia. We're flying oh, over I for that. I can wait for that. Yeah, we're hanging out with everybody at uh, DMDU, which is going to be awesome, and seeing everybody teaming up and having a great time. So, literally, cannot wait for that, man. Um, I guess Are you before... going to have everybody on. Hey, are you going to have everybody on? Uh, um... Look, I'm going to have some people on. Before we mm. before it comes to it, and I'm also taking yeah. across my gear and kind of have a bit of an open call out to some of my friends if they want to tee up something while we're there. Oh, so okay. yeah, we might do some live stuff in person, but we'll have to oh, see yeah. how it goes because I mean a lot of these people are essentially on holiday, you know what I mean? And I don't want to take <laughs> up like a lot of time being like, yeah, cool. I know you want to like check out beautiful Australia, but you want to fucking podcast with a nerd in a bar somewhere. But if they do want to do that, I am available. So tell everybody uh, about Bleeding Gums, man. Let's fill everybody in on your channel or on my channel what each of us do, and we'll go from there, yeah? 
Uh, so for me, I started off doing like stupid like music video things that I didn't think were going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just put music I liked because I was very, very sick of uh, listening to... Back in the day, it would have been like 2006, 2007. Mm-hmm. If you watched like a music video that was deathmatch related, it was hardcore, mm-hmm. black metal, screamo stuff. Yeah. Part just non just non-stop noise or and new metal, and just like Limp Biscuit, like give me something to break, and that'd be sick. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, I'm like, oh Jesus Christ, I'm like, can we please get beyond that? It's like I always hate that when like you go, if you go to like a gig and you go and see a band, it's like people think you've got like to dress a certain way, yeah, to see a certain sort of music. You're like, fuck off. So I just made like my <laughs> own like little music videos of like uh, of the wrestling I liked with the songs I liked, and some people would send me comments they're like, man, this fucking music fucking sucks, and that, and I'm like. <laughs> Like, I'm like, oh, don't who listen cares? To it, like, yeah, yeah. Like, put, it on, put it on mute. Put it on mute and put your own music on in the background. Yeah, you know what I mean. But anyway, but, but so I started doing that. Um, I think that was just at the very start of COVID, mm-hmm. and then eventually I was just like bored in COVID uh, during lockdown and stuff. And I was like, well, I like I. I like talking about fucking wrestling nonstop. So I was like, I'll just record something yeah. and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And then it was the I think I was saying that to you before the very first episode that I, I did. I think. It was February 2021, 20, mm-hmm. I think, or something. And it was the one where Kenny Omega and John Moxley had that good match, but, like, shitty finish, no barbed wire <laughs> match in AEW. That was the, the very sparkless. first thing. Yeah, very yeah. First, yeah, I mean, but the, the, the first episode was, like, 20 minutes. The one I'm doing now that's uploading now is, like, two hours. So it's just, like, you know, like, it's like I said to you before, it's, like, back then, COVID might have been really, really bad for a lot of people and a lot of people's businesses and everything, but if you wanted free time, it was great. Now there's like 8,000 wrestling shows and it's like really, really hard to like keep up, but it is good. Yeah. It is good because you've got so much to watch, but like back then there was like ICW ran in a shed and GCW ran like in a field and that was it shed. for a month. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but then then I just, I just kept going from there and like people, unbeknownst to me, somehow liked it and so yeah. I just kept doing it, so. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of the same, right? Like, so I had wanted to start podcasting for years, like years, dude, like on various topics and stuff that I was into. I think first I probably wanted to do comic books. I was like a big comic book head at the time. And then like, as I got back into wrestling and stuff, I thought it would be something that would be really cool. Um, But I didn't think anybody would give a fuck like about what (laughs) I had to say. I'm like, I'm far from an expert. You know what I mean? I don't know all the moves. I'm not like a, I can't dissect, you know, storylines and emotion and things like that in the way that some people can. And But I just wanted to like, I don't know, do it because it was fun. And I remember talking, yeah. I used to always talk about it and this guy at work, Aaron, shout out Aaron, he'll never listen to this, but he goes, well, man, what the fuck's a wrestling podcast sound like? And I go, this yeah. and I and I play him something and he goes and what's the thing you recorded sound like I play him this and he goes sounds exactly the fucking same just put it up and I go all right then so I did and, and that's how it started out it just started with me talking to myself uh, and I didn't intend to do interviews or anything like that I just wanted to talk about wrestling you know so I talk about New Japan yeah. so I talk about death matches uh, so I covered the G one. And then it wasn't until like an interview for a, an Australian promotion, which we'll talk about later, Deathmatch Down Under mm-hmm. came around, like the promotion came around. I got really excited and I hit up Joel Bateman. We exist in the same Twitterverse. I think I'm like, do you want to do my show? And he came on that sort of the floodgates opened, you know. And since then I've been doing yeah. interviews nonstop since that point. So, yeah. Yeah, man. No, man. You, your, your shit's really, really good. Anytime I see your thing come up, I'm like, holy shit. And plus, I'm like, now, I think the last one that I just saw was like 114. I was like, holy shit. It's like, you know, like, when you keep going, when you get yeah. like that, like, sort of prolific with doing stuff, it's like, you can't, you can't stop. Yeah. I've been padding it with you know bonus I mean? episodes, which don't even add the numbers. So I don't know fucking how many it is. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure I've seen some of them as well. That's yeah. the thing. It's like, I, I, in my brain, I listen to so much stuff and watch so much wrestling that it, like, fries my, like, synapses where I have to watch, like, the same show, like, three times. And I'm Dude, like, I didn't remember the first time. Like, I don't much. remember one thing of what happened. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Also, we're obviously mutual fans of each other. We got talking and stuff, mm-hmm. and so we were just like, "Well, let's hang out and drink beers, and we'll we'll talk some shit." So you were actually organised enough to make a little list of stuff 
which I've never had yeah. a list before, and I'm very impressed by it. So the first thing I always is, I always have lists for everything I do in life. I don't know why. Even if I don't follow them, it's still it's always good to have a list. It's just like a it's just on. like a you know a safety blanket. I imagine I yeah. I should probably instead of being out here, you know dick in the wind not knowing what the fuck i'm doing i should probably have a list but i don't so it's it's probably easier doing that it's probably like it's probably like a lot less like stressful I mean, like just not you know what i mean yeah i mean it's more like, i 100 percent sure sure it is but like for the style of like the interviews that i do with faces and feels i want yeah. it to be like really organic and like just yeah. me speaking to somebody, you know? And so mm -hmm. I only have that real one question at the start and then the rest is just off the cuff. I've never made a note in my life. Mm -hmm. It would probably make me sound more professional, but I don't know. Maybe maybe the shittiness is part of the charm. But your ver <laughs> very first thing that you had in here is pretty obvious and that's how we got mm -hmm. into deathmatches. Both, we both covered deathmatch a lot. Tell me your story, man. How did you get into it? So when I was like 10 or 11, me and my, uh, like, me and my dad like lived in this flat and there's a guy across stayed in this other flat and um more or less he grew weed i didn't know that at the time <laughs> until he got arrested until he got arrested and we saw oh, the fuck. police taking all the plants but anyway yeah. but he he grew weed in this flat across the way mm -hmm. and uh, my dad used to get tapes from him like tape ecw tapes this is when i was like six or seven you yeah, see right, ecw right. tape mm -hmm. and all sorts he used to it used to be fucking weird it was like do you know like the band like westlife Oh yeah, is isn't a, a Westlife boy band, right? A Westlife. No, that's take that. I was about to go. Oh, why aren't you bad for <laughs> good? But that that's take spectrum like, like, of shape. Look, I can guarantee you, shape, I like, slow like, dance to it in high school. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Your boy like, was my, on my the floor. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, like man, honestly, it's just garbage. But like, my dad used to like uh, see this American woman. She used to like send over like this sort of like crappy Westlife ripoff stuff. And uh, the guy that was selling the weed, his her his daughter used to take this stuff, and in return he would give us tapes. And one of the first tapes I got was like this. I still got it in my attic somewhere, and it, the first ever death match I saw in it. This was a, I would have been twelve. Mm -hmm. Was insane lane against Corporal Robinson Fucking when they were stapling lane. leeches to each other's heads. Jesus and on the Christ. same tape, it was it was fucking it was Ian Rotten against Sick Nick Mondo. This I think this is to TOD two. It was Zandig Mondo. There was a House of Horrors and Mitch Page. There was you know the Necro Butcher match where he, uh, him and Pondo and Necro Butcher's arm gets completely fucked up with the light tubes. I don't. I'm it's not like, as much of an old Pondo, school wrestler. Pondo uh, gives him a big suplex. Yeah, Pondo yeah. gives him a suplex, uh -huh. and he lands in this thing. And Necro Butcher's like arms like hanging off. And I was I was like me. eleven or twelve, like watching all this shit. And I was like, I was like, why the fuck is this not on TV? <laughs> and uh, that's that was my first like foray into death matches. But I don't know if you guys had it like similar uh, in Australia, but in the UK we used to have a magazine called Power Slam. And Power Slam was like a monthly. It was like a tiny little Maybe crappy little thing, magazine that covered like, yeah, it covered like everything. It, it used to cover like WCW, ECW, and everything. Yeah. But when like uh, it came to like two thousand and two, two thousand and three, they used to have like full page like spreads of like ROH, Best of the Best, Three PW, mm -hmm. Tournament of Death. There was like the wife beater fucking uh, John Zandig match, where the were taught. Uh, what, what was the name of that guy? That came down and called the bell from the thing. What was he called? I don't know. Frank, I think was his was name it, Frank Tower. I don't know, but it was all like uh, before my time. Like uh, yeah. when when I tell you my story of how I got into it, it's actually mm. pretty recently, like within the last mm. you know five years, whatever it was. Mm. And, oh, and so, like growing up, I wasn't even aware of it, you know. And now I've been yeah. going back and trying to catch stuff, but it's hard to go back and catch stuff when there's so much fire stuff happening now. And I've only got so much fucking time yeah, exactly. in my life as a grown man. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I'm aware of a lot of the names that you said, but I couldn't tell you the intricacies of, of that particular match. So, so what, what year did you get into death matches then? Like fucking, jeez, I don't know. So now you're making me do math live on air, which is <laughs> literally a dick move, like if I got to tell you. But um, <laughs> let's have a think. So what is it? Because I've got to factor in COVID, right? And I don't even know how yeah, fucking yeah. long that went for. That was like two years of bullshit. Two years. And yeah. then, I don't know, five years ago, maybe something like that. Um, so may, maybe shorter. Uh, so my story, I've told on my show before, but I'll, I'll tell it again for, mm -hmm. for your viewers and listeners, is that um, 
huge New Japan fan. So when I got back into, I grew up on WWF and all that kind of stuff. Got out of it for ages. Yeah. I was in a band and being a cool guy and not watching wrestling. Um, that's what I was telling myself. Uh, I got back into it. Got big back into WWE. You know, went and saw some shows, traveled and saw some stuff. But by that time, podcasts exist, right? So then I'm learning about Ring of Honor. Then I'm learning about New Japan. Uh, AJ Styles versus Nakamura at Wrestle Kingdom. And I watched yeah, that, and that was my first Wrestle Kingdom I watched like live, and I was like, "This is fucking crazy! This is everything I've ever wanted in wrestling!" Right. So then we start mm. getting into, um, then we start getting into New Japan, right? And then we go to Japan. So it's my sister in law's birthday. We go. We don't get to see any wrestling that trip, but I'm fucking wanting to. Right. right? Nobody else cares. The next year we go back again with a different group of people and we get to go to show at Karakun Hall, which is really, really fun. Oh, my God. Somewhere where I've always wanted to go. I've never been. I always Dude, want to go there. It, it's so cool. And that was just like a road to show or something from New Japan. There was like an mm. – it was just after Suzuki. This may do the timeline for people, but I'm not going to do a live on here. I don't give a fuck. But it was just mm. after Suzuki – and Suzuki Good and returned to New Japan. They'd been on excursion in Noah and been gone for ages. They came back, attacked Okada, and then there was like a multi-man tag where it was like an elimination tag, which is always really fun in New Japan. Suzuki's there. We're terrified of him. Uh, and then the <laughs> next year, the whole group dynamic of traveling with like seven people or whatever was getting real old real quick, especially in Japan because it's hard to do anything. And also nobody wanted to fucking really like travel the way we wanted to. Because we're like, let's like figure out a thing and like get the most out of our entire time there. And everyone's like, yeah, we want to do it. Yeah. But then you're hung over and stuff and then nobody wants to fucking do anything. But we'll just go anyway yeah, when we're good. completely cooked. So the next year, Mo, Mo, my friend, uh, Amy, my wife, and I go back together. And we're just going to see wrestling, right? We're going to Wrestle Kingdom and then we're just going to see whatever we oh. can. When we're there, how was, was wrestling? It was fucking so good. It was the uh, the, the <laughs> one we saw. Oh, no. We've been to everyone since that day, but that particular one, Ooh, fucking hell. well, you know, with the exception of COVID, obviously. But uh, yeah, yeah, that was the one where Chris Jericho came over and versus Kenny Omega. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, the, the, the 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 makeup, the makeup. Oh fuck, maybe it was the one before that. It was it was the one with Naito. What was that? Was that the makeup? Fuck. It, Jericho was no, no. Well, it was. It wasn't pain maker yet. I think I don't fucking know. My brain is scrambled. Either way, it's the one that headlines with Naito and Okada, and everybody thinks Naito's going to win, but he doesn't. He loses. Uh, so we see that, but we're catching everything we can. And while we're there, uh, one of our friends, Sally, uh, her brother is the wrestler Chris Vice, who at the time was wrestling for Zero One. And she's like, okay. you should go to the Zero One show. Vice is going to be there. And we're like, oh, sick. And we just walk up to the Carcon Hall box office and we're like, can we get a ticket for Zero One? And then when we're there, uh, they're handing out like show bags in the crowd that give you, um, you know, different flyers for other shows that are going to be on. All the other Japanese yeah. promotions are doing shows around that time. And there's a big Japan flyer. I don't look at it then, but we're and, and there was a bit of that kind of vibe on the Zero One show, but not really what I would then go on to see. And I'm looking through the flyers and this big flyer, and it's like strong title, and it's like Daisuke Sakamoto or whatever it is, and it's like main event death match, hundred light tubes, you know. And we're like, oh, oh this yeah. is cool. And I go to the girls, Music I'm like, my ears, they're just know? like, what other shows are on? We just want to go see more wrestling. And I go, hey, this. There's this thing, it says it's a death match or whatever. I've never seen it live before. What do you think? And they're like, we don't care. Let's just go. We can drink and like hang out. And bro, when this main event happened, as I said, Abdullah Kobayashi, it was like a hundred light tube death match. And they just start like hanging light tubes on the rope, you know, with the elastic bands, yeah. super efficient. People in the crowd start like putting on ponchos and putting on goggles and all that <laughs> stuff. And we're like, what's, uh, what's fucking going on here? This is uh, looking pretty extravagant. And then when it started and like the pop start happening and that visceral and all that kind of thing, we were like, what is this and how do we see more of this? And then that sort of like changed our fandom. Like we're still huge New Japan fans, but then we're like, the next year we're like, when can we get to Shinkiba first ring and see freedoms? When can oh, yeah. we see things, you know? And that's what we did for like another three years then before COVID or whatever it was. So 
you know, and we went to uh, the last two trips before the world ended. We did month-long trips in Japan where we would just see whatever we could, like, during that time. And it was really awesome. So I've seen him at uh, Kirkland Hall a bunch of times, seen him at Shinkiba First Ring a, a bunch of times, both Freedom and Big Japan. And they're some of my favourite shows, like, of all time. There's, there's some there, if I knew the day, I wish I had it. You could see me on the stage, like, at some of the shows. What did you say? Sorry, uh, at some of the shing, uh, one of the, at least one of the Shinkeeper first show, first ring shows, you can definitely see me on the stage because like they come out here and I'm just like, what's up? Like yeah. I'm, I'm like on that seat. Like, yeah, it's straight on the thing. Man. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, honestly, <laughs> yeah. I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous because like, that's all I've ever wanted. Like I mean, not all I've ever wanted. That's the thing is like in life, uh, sometimes it's like ah, uh, your missus wants to do something else. Just <laughs> not mine. Just, you're like. Like where, you're like, where do you want to go on holiday this year? And she's like, oh, Italy. And you're like, well, I want to go to Japan to see death matches. You're like, not about it. There's, there's no, there's no really give or take, especially when they hate it, especially when they hate it with a passion. Well, but, that that probably leads into looking. your next question, and we'll just skip ahead because one of your questions was, yeah. how does your partner feel about death matches? Now, mine is into them, and it's maybe become her preferred uh, type of wrestling, just because she's, you know. She's a busy woman, career woman. Um, mm. Attention span isn't always the longest with wrestling, and she just loves how death matches are like bang, 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 adrenaline, yep. shock, scared, all those kind of things, you know? And all her favourite, like real favourite, favourite wrestlers, with the exception of maybe Okada, uh, is, are death match wrestlers. You know, Slack, Jun Kasai, mm. uh, all those ones. How It sounds like uh, your partner's maybe not as keen, Absolutely fucking hates it. Hates it with a passion. Oh uh, I remember the, the first show Bro. she went with me that was deathmatch was Rise ran a tournament. Uh, it was the Outlaw Cup. Yeah. So it was four guys. It was uh, Caden, Lou, Joe, and uh, Darko. So it was like it was like two two semis and then a main. And the main was the first ever uh, two hundred light tube deathmatch in the UK. Mm-hmm. And um, for the set <laughs> for the first round, um, Darko gives Joe a big like. Death Valley Driver, uh-huh. it's a big pane of glass. Mm-hmm. And you guys in Australia, how do you get such nice, crisp panes of glass? We don't get that here. It's so it, genuinely, rules. it's like I'm I'm going to B and Q every show and spending sixty pound and buying shower doors, and they've got things attached to them, and I'm having to fucking take them off with knives and everything. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but like uh, so there's a big pane of glass. It's far too thick. Mm-hmm. He tries to powerbomb them through it. Uh, Darko DVDs Joe through this glass and the glass was flying in the crowd all yeah. over my face everywhere my girlfriend was hiding in the uh, toilet Yeah, hiding in the toilet really? and she, said, she said there was so much glass that it went through the toilet doors oh, that's sick <laughs> and then uh, yeah she she, 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 desp- she despises it I, I think uh, she just puts up with it I don't know why yeah. The, but yeah it's she, a little bit surprising to me not, not being like freaked out by deathmatch uh, not having a good time at a deathmatch show that's not something I've seen before. You know, anybody I've, uh, you know, shown Deathmatch 2 has tended to have a pretty good time with it, you know, even if it's just a, a video clip or whatever. You know, they're like, yeah. what is this weird stuff? And then they watch it and they're like laughing and, you know, and kind of shocked and stuff and they have a good time. But, yeah, it sounds like it was kind of traumatic for her to begin with. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's like I said to her in advance, showed her in advance what it would be, and then she went there and she's like, I don't like this. And I'm like, well, it's like, you paid it, you, you came, it's like, well, what, what do you want me to do? It's like, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm not leaving until the main, I'm not leaving until the show is finished. So, you know, whatever. But no, no, but I, I mean, she still it, supports right. me and doing what I do. And Absolutely. She still sort of tolerates me putting up like posters and all this sort of stupid shit. So, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. So you, so you have a bit to do with the local promotions. Like you asked about, um, you said, how do we have such clean panes of glass in Australia? It's my understanding that we yeah. don't because I've heard tales from Joel and stuff of cleaning that shit up for like ages. You know what I mean? Like tearing yeah, stuff down in his garage where, and where stuff. Do you, where do you get them from? Oh, I, he, where, where building that, sites, I like no donations. Idea. I don't know. I don't know what his rule is. But they're but they're they're perfectly crisp. They, they're like they're like bit, uh, they're like fucking like um, freedoms panes of glass. They're perfectly crisp. They're at least under uh, the thing is as well. It's like I know this is going to be such a sad loser thing for people that don't care about anything to do with like deathmatch wrestling. <laughs> See if panes of glass are over like four millimeters. Yeah, they're too thick. 
and it takes so much more effort to like put them to through. break them. But the panes yeah. of glass you get, it's like every single match in DMDU. Oh my God, there's 17 panes of glass. I'm like, where did where where did you get them from? I, I, it shocks me because <laughs> I, I'm I'm looking into doing it for like uh, uh for the Rise NHB thing and just getting like somebody like somebody to actually cut glass for me. Yeah, to actually make them for a show. And like I, I don't understand it. It shocks me. I don't get it. We're gonna need to put you in in charge, uh, like in touch with a pro. I've never had anything to do with it. I'm on the other side of the country from all those people, so yeah. like, I'm as far as can be. Um, you had put in here in the questions price of light tubes, and I actually looked it up because they don't seem to be very fucking cheap at all. I think a lot of them are donated, no. but in Australia, if I was to go to Bunnings, a local uh, hardware store slash Saturday morning sausage shop, uh, $10.50 each for a T8 for a skinny tube. Which is six pounds or seven dollars US. That's not cheap. So it's more or less the same sort of place in the UK. It's called B and Q. Yeah. There's also a shithole, which is where somebody got those shower doors from. Yeah, it's, you could buy one four foot light tube. Yeah, for nine pounds sixty. I don't know what what difference what the, the exchange rate is for that. But it's like mm-hmm. I, I it, it's it's fucking shocking, and it it, it makes me really really angry. When you see these American shows and they're like, ah, these are Australian tubes yeah. or these are British tubes. And I'm like, I'm Aussie like, do you tubes. have any idea how difficult it is <laughs> to obtain these? It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, just think about that. $10.50 each. And then you're doing like a hundred light tube death match. It's an expensive match to pull yeah. on. And then, and then, and then you do a tournament. Yeah, where every show is like tubes, uh, every match is like. I mean, they get a lot donated, so there's that. (laughs) I think, I think, hopefully. But then, but then that's on the onus of people for that. There was a shop around the corner from me. Mm -hmm. They were like, they were just like chucking away. There's like a huge, big green like bin for light tubes, and like I I went. It's like like my local shop, and I went and I was like, I was like, I was like, can I I take them? Yeah, and they they were they're like, please. And I was like, I was like, can I take those light tubes? There's like 86 light tubes in this bin, and I, and they were like, like, what? Why do you want them? I was like, can I take the light tubes? And they're like, yeah, yeah, well, no question. Bring, bring the bin back. Like, yeah, that's fine. So they're they're all off in my attic right now. Yeah. So it's like my the thing is, it's like 86 light tubes here is like, I don't know, easy like five six hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a lot of money. Eight hundred AUD. That's like not cheap in any way. <laughs> that's absolutely yeah. shit is what that is fuck I don't know how he does it we need to get get Joel on your show to tell you all about it oh yeah definitely yeah exactly right Um, so what are some of the other fun ones you've got here favourite current federations or feds uh, and current yep. favourites I tried to make this list for you but to be honest I have so many favourites I guess uh, my main favourites are ICW No Holds Barred DMDU Ruthless Pro Wrestling mm. Um, a bunch of a bunch of different ones. GCW, Big Japan, Freedoms. When I can catch them, New Fear City with Cass. How about yourself? Uh, for me, it's uh, Nold's Bard. has been like a sort of constant in, in my life for like the last two years. Yes, yeah, very very involved in like their sort of like merch thing and everything. But I see them Rise Kumite DMDU. But uh, that's another thing I was going to say is that uh, I like the uh, what's his name, Big Craig. Uh, he's yes. got the stuff that's from Hazen Combat and as well, but it's, like that, that that's that, that to me as well is like insane. Where where I'm like sitting there, I'm like I'm like surely there can't be death matches in New Zealand, <laughs> and then there's like actually like death matches in New Zealand. And I I saw a clip of uh, I need to watch that show. I've, I've downloaded it, mm-hmm. um, where York gives Horace that big slam, yes, off the top. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, it's insane. But like, yeah, but stuff like that. But like, I don't know. Like, is is it just DMDU in Australia for death matches? Yeah. Does anywhere else put on anything? Or uh, I believe there's a couple of other ones that have sort of popped up now uh, in Australia mm-hmm. over in the eastern states. But for me, like Deathmatch Down Under were the first to do it on any kind of scale in a very long time yep. because it was essentially sort of blackballed in Australia for ages. Because that legendary match with um, Mad Dog and Lobo that kind of uh, got on the news and yeah. and caused us all to never see it again. That was that was always the most annoying thing for me as well. Is the amount of times I heard about that, and I was like, the amount of times I've heard I've heard that I've heard yeah. Alex Colon talk about it as well. Uh-huh. And I was like, I was like, does he mean? I was like, does he mean 
like CCW Lobo. No. Like I didn't know Australia there was Lobo. Lobo in yeah. my head. And I was sitting there looking it up and I was like, he can't be he can't he never went to Australia. Mm-hmm. But uh but yeah, yeah, I've I've seen that match now as well. Oh, awesome. you've seen it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, know, you can see why it uh, caused the problems that it did <laughs> when it was advertised yeah, yeah, as an all ages show. <laughs> Kids getting covered I, in blood I, I and all that. You heard of about the? Did you hear about the controversy that happened in the UK like earlier this year? No, what to stop rise and stuff. No. There was a uh, there was some cunts in a company <laughs> called uh, CCW. Okay. Um, I won't I won't abbreviate their name. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, they were doing a family show, and uh, some they used like a weed whacker and uh-huh. stuff, and light okay. tubes in front of like kids and shit, yeah, children, uh-huh. no eighteen plus, and uh, more or less like the council were involved and police were involved, and it, it stopped sort of more or less like Rise and various other places like getting to do shows for about six months. Really? Yeah. That so sucks. it was uh, so those fucking yeah. So those, those people are pieces of shit, but. Uh, but the shows that they stopped, it was just like sheer stupidity. It's like when you do a death match show, you should make it eighteen plus. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, but I mean, in, in, general, in general, my favorite. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. What else did you have here? You had Mount Rushmore of wrestling and of death match wrestling. Who you got? Well, for wrestling. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so, so for my Mount Rushmore of, of just wrestling, yes. First, Raven, mm-hmm. always Raven. Okay. I'd say he's my favorite wrestler of all time. Mm-hmm. Sabu, yeah. Terry Funk, yeah. Brock Lesnar. Okay, so mostly hardcore guys, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and then Brock... Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean uh, as okay. a lot of my stuff is used to be growing up, and then, and then and then Brock. If, if that was going to be like just. Your Not personal, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Your personal, yeah. yeah, absolutely. How about you? Um, mine would be Bret Hart, Steve Austin, Triple H, and then I cheated and put LOD in as one single one. But if I'm carving the fucking Rushmore, I'm just going to put them both in together. <laughs> the Road Warriors, oh, yeah, that's, they were a huge, a huge one for me when I got started, like as a kid. You know what I mean? Like I remember going through the VHS store looking for anything with those spike shoulder pads and like uh, I, and watching anything they had, you know, and Hart and Austin were exactly what they were and that was the first big like real feud that really got me like pumped on wrestling. Uh, that would and, have been like 97. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. double turn at 13, I still hold as maybe my favourite match of all time. And then Triple H was went on to be like my sort of main favorite that was active when those guys were not and then i think going <laughs> forward <laughs> hey did, did, you, did you like triple h in like 2003 when he was like, i was out of it by then <laughs> oh, you're right. oh, man. i think it's just like a lot a lot of my friends are the same like i speak to all like, yeah. some of my friends like a, a group of us went to the clash at the castle okay yeah and uh we all went there for like a weekend and like uh-huh. we're all drinking and whatever uh-huh. and like i speak to them and it's all different levels of when they they, they just stopped. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. I didn't I didn't stop. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, no, I fell <laughs> out of mid, those kind of mid two thousands. So I was like real into him, Attitude Era, you know, DX Era, taking over that, doing all that, and then out for ages, and then big back into him when I got back into it years and years later. Mm-hmm. You know, with with everything like that. To be honest, and I think just like running all. NXT and everything like he does, like I think just oh, his yeah, taste yeah. in wrestling. And I now enjoy. now he now he runs the company. Yeah, exactly. And I think it'll probably <laughs> I don't watch WWE at the moment. I haven't in a long time, but I think if anybody can make it cool again it would be him. So mm-hmm. fair yeah, enough. That's fair my enough. Th- my thoughts. Uh, I uh yeah, I enjoy him. As for Deathmatch Rushmore, who you got? Right, it's always it's been the same for many, many years. Danny Havoc, okay. Nick Gage, Jun Kasai, Masashi Takeda. That's it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's, my... that, that's, they've, they've been my, especially Nick Gage, mm-hmm. since I uh, got into CCW very many, many moons ago. Mm-hmm. And then when I got into Danny Havoc, uh, when he debuted mm-hmm. at fucking TOD fucking four, mm-hmm. and he was in that match where that guy got blood, got his fucking leg like fucking severed and everything. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, horrible, horrible <laughs> stuff. But yeah, Danny Havoc, him, uh, Takeda, and Junkasai. Yeah, no, that, that's pretty dope. I've got uh, Madman Pondo. Uh, I feel like he was very important to like American yeah. deathmatch wrestling. 
essentially sort of creating it in a sense, you know what I mean? Um, mm. Matt Tremont, I think is the most decorated and will probably retire and remain the most decorated American deathmatch wrestler. Nick Gage, I mean, he's the only guy to ever die in a deathmatch and was a big part of me getting into American deathmatch wrestling. And then uh, Jun Kasai, who is probably like the greatest Japanese deathmatch wrestler in my eyes. Though I love Takeda. I love everybody that you talked about. I would, I but I, I like... Yeah, I never. I, I would say if you're gonna put them like on a, if you're gonna rate them, yeah, I would probably say for me personally, Takeda's probably better. But I, people would hate that. I think I, I know yeah. what you're saying, and I think probably like in a technical aspect and as a physical wrestler, he's better. But I think Kasai has a charisma that not many people yeah, can touch. Yeah. You know, um, the thing about Danny Havoc. So what's that? I said, and his theme music's better. Uh, yeah, and his theme music is better. <laughs> um, and the thing about Danny Havoc is, uh, though I respect everything he did, he was, like, I never really got to see him active, you know? Like, when I was in it, he kind of came back to GCW and, like, did a match kind of thing, but it was like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. Havoc's back. And then, and then, unfortunately, he passed away. So I didn't really like ever get a chance to get, like, going with him. You know what I mean? yeah. I mean, it was. It was. I remember the the first time I like I flew to America to see death matches. I went to TOS uh, four, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember me and my girlfriend went there. She was she didn't she couldn't care fucking less. Anyway, she was <laughs> hammered. Uh, I, I had to put her to bed before like during like m- m- like semi finals or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I remember like speaking to like Danny Havoc there. Uh-huh. Like speaking to him. he was he wasn't even wrestling or whatever, and then speaking to him there, and then the next time. He was at the fucking showboat. He was his last match. Yeah, and he was slack. But yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would love to see more I stuff from him. I saw that match with Slack, and I was like, "Fucking this dude's awesome!" Great. I can't wait to see more from him. And yeah, and just unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Yep. Uh, what? Okay. So, what else have we got here? Uh, you put in gimmicks we hate and love. Uh, mm-hmm. So, what were you thinking with this one? Well, the thing is, it's like a lot of the times when you watch deathmatch wrestling, DMD is completely different. Usually, I mean, at least the tournament sense. Like, what what do you hate? Like, if you're watching a deathmatch, like, or, or you watching a deathmatch tournament, what do you not want to see? Like, do you not want to see cinder blocks or like like is there something that yeah. you're like that's too much or there's something you think's like fucking stupid? It's like what what do you not want to see? Because there's loads of stuff I don't want to see. I just don't want to see anything barefoot ever. Like I, <laughs> I, I can't handle it at all. It's so cool though. No, it's not. It's fucked up. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with bare feet in real life, and I can't deal with them getting stabbed or things happening to them in matches. I just no. I just can't. I can't. No, 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 no barefoot syringes. No, or... none of it. <laughs> none of anything. No. Uh, for me, I don't like. There used to be uh, there was there used to be a precedent. It used to be in like Big Japan uh-huh. and uh, Ida Bay's coast where they used to have things where like they're in the corner. Mm-hmm. You've seen the corners of the ring, each of them. Mm-hmm. And a wrestler used to have to like go into the corner, okay, hit one, and then it would it would fall down. Hit what them, like a pinata like, kind of thing? Traps, yeah. Yeah, okay. And it was they hit them and it, it, it just looks terrible and yeah. it's just like shit. It, it's just <laughs> I hate that. I'm all, I'm all, I like uh, the last dream tournament was okay. Mm-hmm. But like in general, like I'm not really a big fan of like stipulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And death matches. No. If it's a tournament, like fair enough. Uh-huh. But I just just give me light tubes and glass, like it's fine. Yeah, I I mean I, I really enjoyed in it. the death match down under tournament they had the only cans match, which was nothing that but was like awesome. cut cans and stuff. You know, if done well, it can be good. But then some of them are corny, like you say. Deathmatch pinatas is, is not cool. Like if, if somebody's <laughs> if somebody's doing York's finish. It's fine. Jesus. His finish is awesome. Yeah. It's, it, 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 did you see uh, him against Slade at NHB 32? Dude, it was brutal, wasn't it? Oh, fucking. That was that matched the night instantly. Like, Slade may, might be one of my, like, favourite yeah, death match wrestlers going, just because he, like, legitimately terrifies me. Like, he, Does, he, he doesn't care. It's like, yeah. and also, I've never met anybody that's, like, actually spoken to him. Yeah. No, nobody knows <laughs> exactly. who the fuck he is. Like, everybody thinks he's on day yeah, release yeah, from great. prison. And I, I don't know. I, did you watch the full show? Yeah. 
every single other person got like the normal like NHB like logo thing. Yeah. Slade had a big Slade. And it came out on the thing, I was like, that's pretty cool. Right. It's like it's like the sort of what? NHB Undertaker or whatever he's meant. Yeah, to. okay. I I didn't I didn't clock that at the time. Maybe I was looking at my phone or something. When you say that, is it like it wasn't like the the NHB branded graphic, it was just like a, a stamp on there. Like he was just like No, it was, it was like, it was like there, there was NHB branded graphics for everybody. Yeah. Like Joe, Tremont and everything, like the little chains around them. Yeah, yeah. For Slade, it was just Slade. It was the whole screen was covered with Slade. Oh really? You know, it was just it was totally different. That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. That's pretty I don't cool. know if that was like a conscious choice. <laughs> or they it, pressed it the wrong cool. button or something, but <laughs> I mean, th- then again, I have watched the show three times, but but it's fine. Like, yeah, okay, you world. said it more times than me. I I did not have enough time to watch anything <laughs> more than once at best. Um, no, no, I'm trying though. I'm trying to trying to get it in there. Um, you were saying that you you've got some um some plans yourself, like not only to head to some more shows, but also to to maybe even put on some something. Tell me tell me about that, man. So, basically, uh, in the UK, whenever anybody, obviously yourself as well, DMDU and stuff, they're going to Australia, or uh, they're going to the US or whatever. When they come to the UK, they just go to England. Everybody just goes to England. Or Wales, if you're WWE. No one comes to Scotland. There's no death matches in Scotland. Aside from, there was one match that they'd done in air, and it was Iceman and his son. It was really fucking good. Uh, but my my plan is, and I have sent away for uh, like license and stuff. Uh-huh. I've got venues on board and things. Uh, is to run a deathmatch centric company up here in Scotland. Really? So so yeah. So so that that's that's the plan going forward cool. to hopefully March April next year. Wow! And are you going to call it Bleeding Gums, or have you got a whole new name planned? I've got a whole new name. I've got a whole new graphics and logos and everything. Wow. Uh, I just, I think, I think maybe, maybe announcing it on this, just like maybe like a sort of official announcement. Mm, um, that's exciting. Exclusive. Yeah, no, 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 no. Exclusive. No, it generally is. <laughs> <laughs> it generally is because it's like, now that it's like kind of out like in the open, it means that I can't fucking go back. No, and, like, you can't. Now you've committed to it. You no, can't exactly, just like exactly, backpedal so. on it. You hear oh, yeah, that? No, guys, no, you no, no I've, I've got, I've got venues and I've got logos and all sorts of shit. Yeah. And I got people involved and stuff. I know I've sent away for various different licenses. Um, so hopefully that'll be March, April next year. But I'll I'll, I'll keep you posted for that. Yeah. But that, that's that's always been my plan is to try and do something here. That's cool. Because I hate fucking traveling. <laughs> exactly. Just bring it you know to I mean? you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because fuck I mean, I have like, to travel to the other I'm side of the fucking country. Rise, <laughs> yeah. Like go down to rise and t- see that the last fucking Kumite show yeah. I came back from. It was meant to take me like four hours, like on the train, yeah. and it took me like nine and a half hours to get home. Oh Jesus! Because Why delays the tra- and stuff. The, tra- the train tracks in front of us on this train. It was yeah. during this big, quote unquote, heat wave. The the train tracks in front of us were on fire, and we had to sit there for like on two and a half fire. hours. And, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, an yeah, extreme it was, it train action. Like on, on fire. So so we couldn't travel because the train. It was terrible. But like that, that's that's my plan is to try and do something up here because I know like a lot a lot of the guys that want to come up here and they've said they want to come up here and various things like that. But that's the plan anyway. It's yeah, to try yeah. and do something up here to save me traveling and to give the other boys like somewhere you know yeah somewhere especially else to people go. flying in yeah they should fly in here absolutely as opposed to flying in there. I'm still caught on how train tracks catch on fire because aren't they made of metal? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was I Who was knows? there and, and uh, 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 that was that was the same morning. This was the day after Kumite. Yeah. Uh, I was I lost my wallet. Mm-hmm. I lost 180 pounds. Uh-huh. I was stuck on a train for nine and a half hours. Yeah. And then the next day I had to go to work. Jeez. It was terrible and horrible. Sounds but, like my personal you know, nightmare. Though I am a train enthusiast and would like to do that kind of train ride. <laughs> I wouldn't like to do it when I've got work the next day. Huh? Are you joking? No. Yeah, well, the, well, the the joke is about <laughs> Japan, that after you're in Japan oh, at any right. point of time, you become a train enthusiast because you just take it everywhere. And it's the best. And you can get on like a bullet train and just be across the country in hours, you know, 
Like, so mm. I would call myself a train enthusiast, not the kind of person that collects model trains and like builds a train set, though that would be sick. Uh, I more mean riding them and sleeping on them and drinking on them, which is mainly what we do. And not giving any money to the film Bullet Train, which is terrible. Yeah, I, is that not real? <laughs> have, 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 have you not seen that film? No, what is it? No, no, no. Have you not seen it? It's uh, Brad Pitt and... Oh, else, the movie. It? Sorry, I, I didn't catch it. Uh, I want <laughs> to see it because people told me it was good. Is that not true? I mean, don't don't take my advice for anything. I hated it. But, I mean, hated it, it, it might be the best film ever made. Yes, yeah, that's good. that's a lot. Of what a lot of my friends have told me is that it's like a really, really good action film. You don't sound convinced. No, 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 no time for that. The thing is, is I no don't like Sandra Bullock, and I don't like I don't like movies like that. So, ah. you know. but, but I still Sandra like Bullock in it. Star Speed Sandra He's Bullock terrible. is in it. No, no, please God, no. Oh, uh, uh, oh no. Surefire way to get me into it, the movie. Book Sandra Bullock for it. <laughs> you, 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 must, you must have seen Bird Box at some point. No, what's that? Oh, you wait, 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 oh, wait, wait. It's the one. Yeah, I, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You seem to that's, think that's I've got a lot of time movie. in my life, which is not really the case. <laughs> Maybe because I've released 114 podcasts, you think I'm somebody that has spare time. <laughs> but that's not the fucking case at all, let me tell you. They take up all my fucking time. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, I'm saying, all I'm saying is just don't watch that film. Well, there's no no risk of watching Bird Box. I don't give a fuck about it. Uh, there is risk of me watching Bullet pain. Train, though. I think I'd be Against into it. It looked, pretty, it looked pretty funny, I think. No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> It's really not. It's not. I'll guarantee you that it's not. It's, yeah. it's not. It's not funny, and it's not. It's not bad funny. It's not even good funny. It's just kind of. Uh, and it made millions, which makes me sick. Anyway, uh, ca- well, carry on. I mean, Brad Pitt's a very handsome man. You know, you put him in a movie, you're almost guaranteed to make money, right? Print it. Print the money <laughs> when he's involved. Fair enough. Oh yeah, he's in that new film Babylon as well. I don't know what that is, but is I'm sure that? I'm sure he looks handsome in it. It's and him, it's him, and, it's him and Margot Robbie. Okay, that's a couple of handsome uh, yeah, individuals. Yeah, exactly. that was my action. Yeah, a couple of handsome individuals. All right, let's take a quick two minute break because I'm full of mm-hmm. full of beer, and uh, let's reconvene in a second. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put a pause on this, and we'll, right. we'll come right back. Yeah. No problem. Okay, one sec. Cheers. All right, so next up here, we'll briefly talk about our own um, home promotions and stuff. You you talked about, you know, starting your own thing, but you also talked about Rise and Kumite. Have you been uh, involved with those promotions? You get to go to them too often, besides catching, like, nine-hour trains and shit like that? <laughs> uh, well, the, the, the last nine-hour train was the first Kumite show uh, I went to. They had a lot of fucking problems, a lot of fucking council mm-hmm. bullshit and... Mm-hmm. Lots of shit. Uh, but the the show I did go to was when uh, Callum Butcher was there. Yes, and uh, it was it was very very good. And him against uh, Clint Marger and stuff was awesome. That's good. I mean, they had the show before that, and uh, they had Darko against fucking Alex Cologne, and Alex Cologne fucking weed whackered fucking a big bundle of fucking small light tubes into Darko's chest. Jesus. Anyway, and also also by the way, Darko one of the best fucking deathmatch wrestlers in the UK. Watch it at him. He's fucking awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. I hadn't seen any of Darko's stuff until I saw him versus uh, Kira at NHB 32, I think it was, and I was very yeah. impressed. I'm always impressed when anybody does, like, death matches in trunks, you know? Like, oh, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a fearless he's man. Got his, he's got his, like, his G.I. G. Joe trunks. But the thing is, it's like, you, usually, previously, I think he's sold his gear now. Mm-hmm. He, he used to, like, wrestle sometimes his death matches and, like, sort of, like, Sandman like pants. Like I think I've seen those pants. actually. I think I saw he was selling those. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I was I was genuinely gonna like I was like gonna message him and like I was like wait till payday and then they sold. I was like, oh, <laughs> what can you? Do? But no, but like uh, stuff to do with rise. Um, <sighs> like rise is probably the premier like deathmatch company in the UK. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Never mind what like TNT were doing. TNT were just they were like GW and stuff like that. Uh-huh. It was very, very good. Uh-huh. TNT and GW, I mean, they're Jude Parker, 
and uh, Joe was there and things like that. But Rise is the sort of like premier deathmatch promotion yeah. uh, in the UK, and fo- followed by Kumite. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, fucking hell, the, 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 those are the sort of three companies that do stuff mm-hmm. like that, like in the UK. But I don't know. And you enjoy going to their shows? Like, uh, I've only ever, like we were talking about Deathmatch Down Under, I've only ever got to go to one show. Like, I've uh, I've had flights cancelled plenty of times, like when I was trying to go to shows, you know. Um, this next trip that I'm making over to see them and ICW will be like the most shows I've seen in a row. That's like four in a row, which will be killer. Yeah, it'll be good, it'll be yeah, good. Yeah, it's going to be Yeah, no, I mean, fucking hell. I mean, the, the last... Proper show I went to apart from the Kumite one was Rise done the uh, fucking the Outlaw the Outlaw tournament. Mm-hmm. So secondary yeah. like tour. I mean, yeah, I would say secondary is mm-hmm. the wrong word. Mm-hmm. I'd say secondary is the wrong word because they usually have the games of death, yes. which we're having this year as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, we had before. Alex Colon over for that, and I was there all day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I built a, like a saw board for Marcus Crane. And stuff, and I was uh, with the Deathmatch Outlaw guys. Yeah. I don't know if you've spoken to those guys before. I haven't. No, the guys of the Deathmatch Outlaws. No, they're 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 fucking good guys. Like mm-hmm. it's like uh, you go into like into a building. Mm-hmm. They're there like fourteen hours before anybody else, and it's it's not it's not just like taping up bundles. Yeah, it's like drilling and sawing and making contraptions and all sorts of shit. Yeah, making like scaffolds and everything. Yeah, like uh, Deathmatch Outlaws do do a good thing. Yeah. That's really but cool. um, but like, that, that that was that was the last show um we were at and uh, that was the main event was Joe and Cologne, mm-hmm. I think. I mean, I, I yeah. think I was on the stage for that. But yeah, but that that was the last like main big show, and then obviously there was all that bullshit that I told you about the people, the weed whackers in the kids yes. show. Yeah, and it kind of like completely killed everything for a couple of months. Yeah, right. Slowed everything mm. right down. Yeah, yeah. All these pussies. But, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, what's a, what's a few bundles and wee backers and kids? Who cares? It's hundred hundred percent. I think I think all the problem isn't that, that it's the not advertising it is the problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, well, yeah. yeah well, that, that's that's the whole point. Is it's like it's like I couldn't care less. It's like you could do whatever you want at a show. I don't care. But if you're going to advertise death matches, make eighteen plus. Just yeah. say that on the show yeah so don't, a, don't put it as family better. friendly entertainment and you're just like yeah. you know <laughs> fuck family fuck family friendly uh family friendly rest and i don't like that at yeah. all i know a, a lot of the people who I'm, who I'm really good friends with are involved in stuff like that yeah i don't want to see family friendly less and no one no one cares i mean like not me anyway yeah but, oh. i mean like i'm fine to go to those shows and i have a good time with it but now that like there's the opportunity to go to those 18 plus shows and and see that stuff. It's why I'll fly to the other side of the country because it's super why, fun. Why you know? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, yeah it's so okay, much more yeah. exciting. Um, you had asked me uh, in our notes how I had sort of become involved with Deathmatch Down Under and, and sort of related yeah. with those people. And I, t- I, t- I touched on it briefly, but that, that was exactly exactly how I um, yeah exist in the same Twitter versus Joel Bateman and Deathmatch Down Under – uh, was announced and I became super excited about it. And so I got him uh, onto the show and we had a really fun chat. We got on great. Uh, I consider him a really good friend now. We we had an awesome time. And then I started doing more interviews um, after that. I, I don't remember when it was. We were on Facebook or something. Neil Diamond Cutter had posted yeah. something and I replied and he messaged me and was like, hey, you Joel's friend? And I was like, yeah. And then he goes, I just sent it. And then a video, like a voice message appears. And he goes, <laughs> hey, you're a cunt. <laughs> because he thinks it's hell funny, like the kind of things Australians say. We got yeah, talking back and thing forth. Is, it's the same in the UK. Mm. Danny DeManto gives me the same shit. Yeah. He's, 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 every single time I'll call people cunts and stuff. And he always messages me, and he's like, he's like, he's like, you're, he's like, you're a good fucking cunt. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I don't know if they, I don't know if they understand. Dude, like, no, they love it. Like, they love it. Joel, Joel Bateman and I yeah. did a, an interview before he went on his American tour for the first time, and we broke down the use of the c word in Australian culture on a podcast, and a lot of people loved that episode. People say it'd be, that it'd be, it'd be more, it'd be more fucking, it'd be more fucking prevalent than it is here. Yeah, really? yeah, well, well, in America or in Australia? 
in no, Australia, no, I mean, it's I mean, fucking... I mean, in the UK, I mean, like, you guys must say fucking cunt more than, more than us. I don't know what you're cunting really? talking about, but uh, we, <laughs> we we drop it quite a lot. But no, we explain, no, no, we explain no, 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 that it's like a term of endearment. Like, go listen to that. It's called, I think it's called, like, Joel Bateman Takes Flight, I think was the name of the episode. Uh, but we talk about it a lot, and quite a few people were, like, uh, sharing memes and stuff like me after listening to Faces Feels cast, and it's, like, Larry David from Curb Your <laughs> Enthusiasm, like, saying, cut, 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 yeah. like, heaps. Yeah. Darren McCarty, uh, uh, NHL Hall of Famer, will constantly call me a cunt uh, whenever he can speak to me. Um, there's, yeah, oh, really? it's, yeah, yeah, it's just, like... The thing, it, is, the thing is, is that, that's a good thing. Oh, he knows it's a term of endearment. That's the thing, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, but that and so that got me talking to Neil. We did an interview together. I'd been talking to Cass for a while because he was out just before he did that tour, just mm. before, like, and they called it Deathmatch Down Under before the company well, he, really he's launched. Over you guys as well. He is. He is. Yep. Uh, and we did an interview together, and that just sort of started the ball rolling. And I started speaking to different people. Uh, I did other interviews with people from Deathmatch Down Under, Jay and Aaron. Uh, I did like a, a dual interview with both of them, Damien Rivers, Callan Butcher, um, various people now, York, you know, uh, you mentioned um, Vic Craig. You know, I try and speak to as many of the Deathmatch Down Under crew as possible, Gore, Vixen, you know, and just uh, mm-hmm. touch, ba- touch base with as Gore. many of them as, as I can, yeah. Mm-hmm. Gore. Gore. Like- like Gore Gore. Did, 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 did an interview though. Yeah, yeah. Death like, match down under his heavyweight champion, terrifying Gore. No, no, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, like, I know he is. I'm, I'm just saying, like, does he end like? Was he like happy to? Uh, I'm not sure Gore's ever happy. I don't know if that's the word you use <laughs> to describe him. If you listen to to my interview with him. He's kind of a stern I, I, man, I you know what I mean? But he's a fucking, he's a yeah. lad man. Like, he's, you uh, know, he he's like a serious weapon of a person. And he was happy to just fucking talk some shit and kind of, you know, tell me about his life because he's a, a trained human killer, you know? Like, he literally I, I, trains I, I people in martial it, arts, you know? know? Like, he moved to Thailand and like trained in martial arts for years and was like semi pro in UFC and in kickboxing yeah. and stuff. He's like an actual very dangerous person. Um but yeah, it, that interview exists in the archives. So if anybody's interested and want to hear like the I'll, history I'll, of Gore, I'll, I'll check fucking, it out. I need, I need to watch that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean the the main, the main person that I saw from DMTU aside from obviously all the deathmatch guys that I really liked was uh, Lockie Hendricks. Yes. I thought he was fucking money. Yeah, he, he, uh, he's that, awesome. that 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 to me is like it, it sounds it sounds like it's like a cliche. It's like the person that's in a company that does violence that hates the violence. I know it's so it's good, like, right? Only from ECW and it's 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 the stories all the time. But yeah. like, uh, I love Lucky Hendrix. I think he's so fucking money. He's money, uh, and I, I've I've not seen him since the the cage uh, yeah thing. The Emu War Games, the great Emu War Games. Yeah. Uh, he it was, it, was, it was a good match. I, I saw yeah, it was amazing. He um he was live in the house when I went to not here to fuck spiders and they had that like Lucky Hendrix celebration kind of thing and he comes on it's like yeah, ah, and he's the, it was yeah. so fucking funny. Um, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm a I'm a big fucking fan of that. I'm a big fan of yeah. that. Yeah. And I, I haven't had a chance to watch the whole show back because I was like there. I don't know whether they showed you, but the the deathmatch wrestlers and the anti deathmatch party were fighting the entire night. Like, you'd be in the crowd having a beer yeah. and then one of them would run through and punch somebody and then they'd be brawling in the crowd yeah, and no, shit. No, no, like, no, it was they, all they, night. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think they showed it. I don't, I don't think they showed it either, but, like, it was literally for the crowd. It was happening the entire yeah, night. Anytime. Like, I'm briefly speaking to Joel. He goes, oh, yeah, man. And then and then suddenly a fucking anti-deathmatch party dude comes through and fucking king hits him from behind. And then he's him and Vic Craig are brawling with the anti-deathmatch guys in the fucking crowd amongst all the punters and stuff. It was a great night. It was really epic. I can't. No, it was, no, it was awesome. Yeah, Deathmatch uh, Deathmatch Down Under shows are fucking awesome. Um, so what else have we got here? Some of the other things we wanted to touch on briefly were the garbage wrestler stigma in Deathmatch Wrestling. Um, it's not something that I have really cared about or ever... Uh, experienced or you know or anything like that. I know 
that people have said that. I don't feel it's the same way. Maybe it was like that in the past and maybe I can watch old clips of shitty wrestlers. I mean, we tried to watch uh, me and Corey from Deathmatch Worldwide. That may be a segue for later. Um, mm-hmm. Reviewed uh, the original King of the Death Matches, an actual podcast oh, that will... Name, name seven. Yeah, but the podcast will yeah. never see the light of day because my... <laughs> system fucked up and the interview was lost i never like so we never got to release that but that was rough going and besides like pondo who was like a shining light in that tournament it was like pretty rough and so i could see how people would have maybe given some of those guys that stigma i don't think that's correct today and i think anybody that watches you know any of the high ranking you know trending kind of shows that happen today i don't think you could ever say that so when I was, uh, this was the day after. So for all, what's it called? The Clash of the Castle. We were there. Me and my friends were there. Yep. Drinking, doing whatever. We were there the next day. All Out was on mm-hmm. the next night. Yep. Uh, there was some a pub quiz. The original and, uh, All Out? There, I was drinking. The, are was you it? talking about the original All Out? Was that the time frame? Yeah, well, I mean, it was, it was so the, it was, like, we were there for Clash of the Castle. It was mm-hmm. the Saturday. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. And then the next day would have been all out was on, but we, we were in a pub to watch it. Yeah. But I ended up going outside for a cigarette mm-hmm. and it, somebody was arguing with me mm-hmm. and like, bear in mind. Right? <laughs> now I, I'd have been drinking for about 16 hours <laughs> and I'd have had some other sort of like, uh, some sort of like a uh, body enhancement. Yeah. Okay. What, 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 what do you say? Right, somebody was arguing with me outside, saying they were like they were like death match wrestling's not wrestling, and they were like, uh, "What they say?" They were like, uh, "They were like Nick Gage isn't a wrestler." They were like, "Nick Gage isn't a fucking wrestler." So, in, uh, unbeknownst to me, start swinging. Or, I'll, be, or, I'll be opening up. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> I, 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 I was, I, I was, I was like thrown out of like where we were and stuff and. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm not proud of it, but like. Uh, <laughs> oh, so it got to I, that. No, it got. Did, you got no, aggressive. No, genuinely, like it really, it really, really made me angry because I was like, I was like, man, I was like, you don't know fucking nothing, and I, I was very, very drunk though. Yeah. I was. I was like, why not? <laughs> I was like, I was like, why not come up to me when you're like mildly sober and yeah. I'm sober, and then we can chat about wrestling. But no, but like he was like spitting on deathmatch wrestling and giving Nick Gage a hard time and stuff and. Uh, you just Nothing hit him with a bundle. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, again, the man, it's, it's like, it's fucking like half past four in the morning. Yeah. I've been drinking since half past 11. I'm like, ah, oh, well. You're well, like, this is MDK but, all day, bitch, and you're about to learn all yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. But it was just like, it was just his, his sort of like, what's the word for it? His sort of snippy nature of being like, that's not wrestling. I was yeah. like, who the fuck are you speaking to? And then, then, then it went on from there and there and that part. But Which is always people, a really funny but, argument to me because when people like come at me about anything to, to do with that, I'm like, you know, it's all a work, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like, exactly. Exactly. Like, I know, I know, spare I know. me. But uh, I mean, you know, uh, dramas and stuff aside, I think it's pretty clear that, I mean, we're in the golden age of deathmatch wrestling right now. Like, it's oh, 100%, never yes. been better. It's never been ex- more accessible. It's never been more popular. Um, and like I said, when I first got into it, it it's just something different that stood out to me. Um, and ironically enough, like a, a lot of people think that I would maybe like Deathmatch because of the blood and and things like that. But it's actually the opposite for me. I hate that stuff. I don't want anybody to get hurt. But the risk... You don't the, like blood. The, I mean, I it's fine. Like, and it definitely adds to the match. But I'm not just like, yes, let's see a motherfucker bleed. That's not really the story for me. You know what I mean? The story for me is the deep water. Like, it's yeah, the yeah, yeah. it's the fight that keeps going and gets more and more dangerous, and the risks and the adrenaline increases, and then we get to a place where there's uh, a crescendo of violence. You know what I mean? And that's what really gets me into it. But I'm not like. I can't wait to see who will bleed the most. That's not really what I care about. You know what I mean? Like, and I know yeah. there are fans that are that. You know what I mean? Like, I I feel like maybe my motivations are a bit different than than some others. You know what I mean? I, but I I, th- I think that the fans that are like that 
are the sort of people that keep it alive. Oh, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're the ones that, that carried like it all the way through. If, yeah, absolutely. If, if, if there wasn't people, if there wasn't people like praying for violence every day, like death <laughs> matches, wouldn't, they wouldn't exist. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly right. And I'm not, I'm not talking shit about anybody. And I'm saying everybody has like their own reasons for it. But I like, mm. and especially since I've got to know death match wrestlers and interview them and stuff, it can get pretty fucking stressful. Like if I'm honest, like when oh. I when I watched uh, Cologne and Callan wrestle directly in front of me, you know, in the main event of oh, Not yeah, Here to Fuck yeah. Spiders, and they're two people that I now Good consider match. friends, amazing match. But there was a couple of points there when I thought they really fucking hurt, you know, and they're now my friends, and I'm like, I don't want to see Callan die. You know what I mean? Is kind of the thing. And I'm like, I'd be and, fine. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what you think. Fine. But you have fine. those moments in that where you're like, what, what am I doing? Why am I watching this? But the fucking, it, but then when, when, when he gets up again and it fucking starts going and stuff like that and you're yeah, hitting on the barricade knows, and stuff. Yeah. He knows how to work the crowd, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And th that's what it is. You know what I mean? It's, it's that adrenaline rush and it's the like, uh, nonstop nature of it and they're, yeah, the build and the acceleration of violence, I think, that I really like, and the risk of it all, because it is, yeah, you know, can be, like, pretty hectic. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. How about you, though, man? I mean, like, yeah, like you say, it's, it's one thing watching these wars on TV and stuff. You obviously go live. You've become friends with these wrestlers and stuff. How is it when you go to, like, Rise or Kumite and you see your now friends, you know, risking themselves uh, I would say it's uh, it's it's a different thing it's like uh, it's like th there's nothing in Scotland aside from I, I know Iceman and like Jack who going moan at me if I don't say it uh, Pro 2 did do a, you, uh, a Scottish death match in air uh -huh. for Pro 2 wrestling so go and do that it's because they, they'll somebody will moan at me for that <laughs> but no it's uh, uh, I, I, Fuck it, I fucking love it. I, I just, yeah. I just want, I just want. Uh, Rise is the sort of premier deathmatch wrestling mm -hmm. thing in in the UK, mm -hmm. bar none. I mean, I know that uh, we had TNT uh -huh. and GCW. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I assume, I assume you you saw some of that. Mm -hmm. I know, I know that uh, yeah. the Clint was the TNT Extreme Champion, was it? Uh, and yeah, I, I know he, he, Alex he took that. I don't know whether he's still. Does Cologne still have it, or did he win it back, or what happened? Uh, Clint, Clint beat Alex for the thing, but there was like there was this 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 big massive show, mm -hmm. uh, like three shows in a row, and uh, I mean they 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 did they, the thing is just like annoys me because it's like it feels like so petty to criticize it. Yeah, it genuinely feels so petty to criticize it, but it's like uh, Big Joe was there. Big Joe was there. Big Joe said on one of those shows he was on the NGI. Uh -huh. And he was, he was like, oh, and then John Wayne Morrock came in. John Wayne Morrock said that, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that, that was TNT. But, like, for Rise, like, the last, like, Rise show that I was at was um, the Outlaw Tournament, which Alex Colon was at. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the next show I'm going to is October. So April to October. Yeah. That's a long a fucking a time to not run a yeah. show. Mm -hmm. But, it, but, anyway. Did you well, guys? Like, I, did you I'm, guys I'm, like have additional restrictions and stuff like that due to COVID or during that time? Or it was more due to the the people that I told you before that fucked up with the weed oh, whackers that are chosen. Yeah. Before. Okay. Yep. 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 It was exactly. all, all all due to like the, the council, mm -hmm. the council and people and moaning and things like that. Yeah. But right. hey, and anyway, all all that stuff's kind of like on the back burner now. Yeah. Uh, now we've got uh, the biggest show in Rise's history, Rise of Die, uh -huh. uh, and we've got somebody you might not know called uh, Leonardo Darwin. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen Darwin? Oh, wait, <sighs> did, did he have something to do with Big Joe sort of earlier in his career? Like, was. Yeah. Yes, like yeah. Joe was sort of his original bodyguard, which sort of led to him yes. not wearing pants yes. and that. Oh that yeah, so. Yeah. He I know, is, I know, he I know. Is my. Like, I, I I I know I know I know it, it, it might moan at me anyway. He's my favorite wrestler anyway. So like, so rise or die. Before. He's kind of like a Lockie Hendricks type character as well, isn't he? Like from the way I understood it, yeah. it's that same vibe, like that whiny, like heel sort of. 
bullshit, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, but he's like, oh man, oh, you, you. All, all I'm going to say to you is go and look at uh, Leonardo Darwin. That's what I'm going to say. Well, Joe there, did, <laughs> did send me some some clips like uh, of him and Leonardo Darwin, which I really loved. And there was like some English idol guy like singing who was like his dad or something. It was insane, <laughs> but I fucking <laughs> loved it. I was like, Wagner. I don't know what's happening, but this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what Wagner is this? Is, <laughs> Wagner is Leonardo Darwin's father. In real life or just like character? No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> character, but he's but, actually uh, a singer like in real life or something, right? Uh, well, I mean, he was on like some sort of fucking like pop idol, like yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. But like, is he like actually shit? Nice. He's like not a good singer, or no, he's terrible. Like, <laughs> no, why would anybody want like that, 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 that's like that's like half the point. But, uh, anyway, but like, uh, but like, uh, uh, Rise of Die is October sixteenth. It's on Sunday. Oh. I'm there. I'm sponsoring the show. My fucking logos on the canvas, nice. and I'm waiting until like. 15 years later when they dig up the canvas and I can cut it off and put it in my wall. Bro, bro, I got... Hang on, where is he? i got to show you something. This is just interrupting the show. Okay, cool. Where is it? It's on... Oh, it's so deep. I'm going in. Just fucking up the entire situation. You can just vamp while I find this. If I fall and break my neck now, it's on you. Hang on. It's already filmed. It's fine. Nice Zubas. Yeah. They're not Zubas. They're He-Man pajamas. They're sick. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, oh, fuck yeah, man. That's cool as fuck. So that is from the first Dream Tournament. Beautiful. I, 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 mean, I, d- I just remember seeing that. That's in the Arrow and Swanson, isn't it? Yeah, that was in one of the corners for uh, the Deathmatch Down Under Dream Tournament. Um, and then you would have seen... I, I didn't actually know this was going to happen, but in the... Dream Toon Tournament, you can see my logo in the entrance, which was really cool as well. I didn't know yep. that was going to happen. I, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know when it's going to happen, but I will be the centre logo of the new canvas when that happens, like their thing. And it made me regret having my fucking face as the logo because <laughs> it's going to look like I, that, I think it's my own promotion. <laughs> It's like it's like when when I, I got I get my shit on the thing and like I'm like fair enough like put blood in it yeah. cover it in blood like yeah. I I just I'm waiting for when uh, Danny was awkward the guy who run fries yeah just to cut it up eventually and yeah. then just I'll put it on my wall that yeah. is a bit bloody that one like <laughs> to be honest man you should try and sell that no I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I'm gonna stretch it and put it on a fucking thing. It's my very first like ever sponsor thing I ever did. So I'm gonna. You I'm gonna. Have on your wall, man. I'm gonna. Make, yeah, it's gonna be killer. I don't know where the fuck I'm gonna put <laughs> it, but but it's gonna be dope. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's super fun to like you know help these people and support what you like you know and to to give back to them because they give us so much. It's like pretty killer. Um. Did you? There, there's so few companies in the world, like aside from like America, uh-huh. ridiculous. In America, you've got like uh, Slave to Deathmatch, what that Neil was in like last week. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that and review that like next week. It's like there's tournaments like every week. Yeah, but like for Australia and the UK, like we don't have that much death matches. No, all the time. You know what I mean? No, especially here. The fact that we've had like two like now is like crazy. And then also, uh, I mean, there's no way I can get over for it, which is a real shame, but uh, Vic Craig just announced they're about to do like a, um, you know, New Zealand tournament yeah, coming New up Zealand as well, one, yeah. which, which is awesome, you know, and he can follow that kind of blueprint of Deathmatch Down Under and, and do uh, the same thing for... It's, 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 just, it's just like one more reason to want to go to New Zealand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would almost say the main <laughs> reason to want to go to New Zealand, but. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, no, I don't know. I mean, it's like, 
Well, my girlfriend said, I say I'm going to New Zealand now, a lot of rings and blah, blah. And I'm like, not really. And now I'm like, oh, well, whoa. Yeah. Heathen combat. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to be yeah, so pissed off cool. when yeah, you go I, there I, and then she I, figures I only, out. I only go places. I only go places if there's like death matches. Yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it sounds like petty and stuff like that, but like, I only go, like, I, I, like, I only want to go places where I can see some blood and violence. That's it. <laughs> well, speaking of going places and uh, blood and violence, you and I actually may get to catch up in the same place because there's a music festival coming up that your favourite band of all time, Tism, who are an Australian band Tism. that I could not believe that you knew, Tism stands for This Is Serious Mum, who like yes. finished up back in like 2005, are coming back and are playing... What's the name of the festival again? I've already forgotten. Oh, I can't, I can't even remember. The can't name even remember. Either, An man. Australian yeah. festival. I'm going, and you're like, I've bought tickets. And I'm going because I want to see Tism, and I'm like, bro, I'm going yeah, to that yeah. festival, I, which is crazy. Tism, Tism are Tism are a band that, and and this and this like, whatever it was, changed my life genuinely. It was say, do you know who the Brian Johnson Mascara? Yes. Mm-hmm. And there, were, there was there was an interview with him, and it was uh, Adam Newcomb. And he was like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. and he was like, he was like, Tism. and he was like, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, who are these? Who are these? Who are these Tism people? And then, <laughs> then after that, now like I've got like fucking fourteen vinyls in my house and all that sort of shit. You're Tism. you're like a super fan. Oh, See, I knew them, and they were like sort of part of. Australian culture, but I like not like the level of fandom you have. And it was called the Good Things Festival, is what it is. Yes. And it's in like I think it's in November. So we got tickets. We're flying in, literally going to the festival, and then flying out the next morning, coming back to see um, My, Offspring in Perth again. So it's like just like you know back, back and forth. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be brutal. On, on, but... Honestly, it's it's like to me, it seems very untism of them to do a show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean... Like, like it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like the sort of thing that... Like, you thought they'd, they like, do. just never come back ever again? No, no. I have 100%, because the one of the lead singers is uh, Damien Kill, mm-hmm. and I, I speak to him a lot of the time. Uh, he's had three bands since then. Oh, really? And uh, he's also got all, I've got all his vinyls and everything since then. Uh, yeah. So... Uh-huh. Have you ever seen them live before? Tism? Yeah. No. No. D- uh, no, no. Yeah. I was telling you uh, before when we, we had spoken that I've seen them live once before and they played in Perth. Oh. They were all like, you know, all the members were there. If anybody's ever seen Tism, there's many, many members, you know, live on stage and they're, they're playing and there's all the people playing bands, but then there's just like in the band, but then there's just people dancing as well. So they're all masked yeah. people. Yeah, and there's people, they've got torches and they're, they're dancing. Very, very choreographed dancing. Yeah. Yeah. And they were crowd surfing and stuff into the crowd. Yeah. And one of them crowd surfed in the crowd. And my friend Dylan, who was like holding them up, pulled his mask away. They always hide their faces so they don't know who it is. Pulled his mask off his head and the guy covered his face and he got out. And then they just had many spare masks. But then Dylan just had a tism mask on for like the rest of the night while we're all drinking. And then we're like in the taxi on the way home and he's wearing the Tism mask and shit. It was so awesome. Ah, so cool, man. It was so cool. It's so cool, man. <laughs> Honestly, like Tism were like a, 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 diff- a different thing. I, I remember it was it was like, like two years ago or something. Yeah. I messaged uh, Damien Kill, who's like one of the guys yeah. from Tism. And I was, I was like, I was like, it's the before wrestling or whatever. I was, I was like, I was like, can I use like your music? Yeah. Like, for best, mm-hmm. and he messaged me. And he was like, he was like, yeah, he's yeah. Like, cool, whatever. Like, fine, he's like, fine. But he's like, don't even mention me. And I was like, I was like, oh. yeah, cool. Still, man, honestly, yeah, the, the, one of the best fans of all time. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, hopefully, you do end up getting over, and we'll get to uh, drink a few I, beers I in person. Too. That would be epic. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And hope, hopefully BMD are running like some sort of show at that point. See, that's what I was getting at. If the timing works out correctly, you hear this, Joel Bateman, you, to you run at the same be, time as the Good Things Festival. They must festival. be running some sort of show. Surely. Surely they must be. So we'll get it. We'll get them on it. Um, okay, final points that we had. We want to talk about Deathmatch Worldwide. We briefly touched on them briefly. 
uh, before. But we both love him. Uh, Deathmatch Worldwide sponsors your show. How did you make Corey? Um, it was just through through messaging. It was just uh, it was one of these things where uh, during lockdown as well, where you're, you're like you're like somebody, you're like somebody who gives a fuck about stuff like that I yeah. care about, uh-huh. and he's actually making t-shirts about stuff that I care about. genuinely. That's all it was, and then uh, then I started messaging him. Uh, nah, Corey's a fucking awesome guy. He is, man. Um, and uh, he's 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 been very very nice to me, and uh, good for him. Yeah, he he's genuinely one of my really really good friends. We talk very regularly, and I probably met him very similar to you. Uh, after I did my interview with Neil Diamond Cutter, I wanted to buy a Neil shirt, show support. Uh, I did, and then sort of had like a positive interaction with. Corey via email, you know, thanks for your purchase. I'm going to send in a couple of weeks, whatever it was. And we got talking and I was like, man, I'm doing interviews with people now. I've now done a couple, you know. Um, if you want to come on and promote Deathmatch Worldwide, we could do that. And he was like, yeah. And so we did that. And it was one of the only interviews that we we had our chat. And then after the chat finished, we just kept talking like for, ages like I was doing my shopping and I had him on my mobile phone like in my headphones and we were just like talking as I was running my errands and shit for hours you know what I mean like we just vibed hell well Uh, and so yeah we've been been super good friends uh, since that day and then um, yeah and I've been getting merch off him a bit since then in fact I have a package on the way now Corey assures me it's the heaviest he's ever sent because I did my order of like my four or five shirts whatever it was just before the American postal system stopped shipping to Australia uh, during COVID so we had like a year before he could ship to me again and I was like that's okay just leave it in the corner and just keep adding to the pile and so occasionally I'd message him like he'd share something and I'd be like add it to the pile meaning like just pile that fucking shirt on with all the others and we'll just do it, you know sort it all out at the end so I'm looking forward to seeing that I think it's been it was in Sydney like I don't know a week ago and it still hasn't made its way to WA so I'll get it eventually but uh yeah it's like six pounds whatever that is in kilos, I don't know. But, <laughs> but he says it's by a couple of pounds the most he's ever sent. <laughs> Heavy ass. <laughs> have you have you ordered quite a bit of stuff from him? I, uh, oh, fucking hell. I, I can't remember now. Uh, I mean, it was two or three things. Yeah. I can't remember. Uh-huh. I mean, they're always like at least five or six T-shirts. Yeah. I mean, uh, fucking uh, Corey... To me, anyway, it's like I, I started speaking to him like years and years ago. I can't remember it even when. Yeah. But like it was always like, uh, somebody's doing something. Yeah. Somebody's doing something with something I like. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. I always, I always enjoy that. It's so rare it happens, right? <laughs> it's a, it can be like a very solitary fandom, being a wrestling fan. You know, I know it is here for me in Australia, you know, so I don't know how it is in the UK, but not many people are into the same kind of shit that I am. That's true, that's true. Mm -hmm. I did not know you were into New Japan. Yeah? (laughs) You haven't gone all the way back to episode one then. (laughs) (laughs) Revealing the fact that you haven't, but that's okay. Um uh, I also, uh, if you didn't know, any, are you into New Japan or primarily Deathmatch Wrestling? Uh, if somebody gives me a match, I'm, 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 I'm happy to watch it. You like wrestling, I'll be but you don't actively. I'm so a big fan. I'll be that. Yeah, right, right. Well, anybody who is into New <laughs> Japan and watching this, <laughs> I'm not, I, say, I don't, I don't need to be a dick about it. It's no, no, no. Sorry. It's totally fine. I would never. Uh, expect anybody to like the things that I like or or need them to, you know what I mean? After like an entire mm-hmm. lifetime of having nobody else in Australia know what wrestling is, I really don't give a fuck to see the truth. <laughs> I just like what I like. But anybody else who does like New Japan, I do have a second podcast called Okada Shorts that I uh, do with a friend of mine That's named Curtis, name. who's actually from England. Like, Thank mm-hmm. you. We thought it was funny. Uh, I said to my wife, I'm like, what should I call it? And she's like, you should just call it after like, something that everybody in New Japan loves, like Okada shorts. And I was like, and that's it right there. <laughs> so uh, when um, 
I guess I guess the very last thing that then we we need to touch on then is is the most prominent news in deathmatch wrestling at the moment the deathmatch wars XPW versus ICW no holds barred it's all in the news people are moving shows these guys are trading barbs back and forth I was not a fan in the days of CZW drama and and different things that were going on how's this been for you and what uh is your opinion because I I'm very much of the opinion that like you know uh, high tides raise all boats. I think the more business for the wrestlers and all that kind of stuff is good. I want everybody in there. And I think the drama of a war, so to speak, is perfect. So whether it, whether it's a work or not, it's, I, it would help I, both customers. I generally, <laughs> I generally don't think that a war is a good thing. No, no. I think that there's... I generally know. Like, no. I have you ever heard of a little thing called the Monday Night time. Wars at all? Or? <laughs> no, no, my God, no. But for the love of fucking Jesus. I think it's just like when they, they did that thing, they were like, uh, NHB were running in Texas. Yeah. And uh, fucking XPW were running in New Jersey, the Hot Ballroom. Mm-hmm. And then NHB changed suddenly. They did. They were going to run the show. Blah, yeah. blah. Uh-huh. The thing is, it's like, I'm going to be watching the NGI. Uh-huh. I'm only watching the NGI because Big Joe's there, uh-huh. and like, so so what? Like, uh, it's. Do you, if, if do you, you, f- do you find it annoying that like, uh, like everybody starts to like run on the same days in competition? Then you've got to pick between the different things. Is that is that it? Hate it. I've got three PTs. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <Doesn't matter. laughs> I, I, I don't care and, and, and if and yeah. if I was to pick a certain company, I would pick G C W because Big Joe's there. I pick I, I don't pick companies based on, you know Yeah. Whatever. You pick it based Joe's on the wrestlers. Fucking, yeah. Yeah. I, I pick because Big Joe's there. Yeah. Big Joe's against Joey Murdoch at the fucking NGI. Yeah. Who gives a flying fuck about these fucking idiots? <laughs> but then again, they've got fucking the Bev against Dirty Ron. See, see, the thing is, it's kind of different for you and me, right? Because we're not in the race of buying a ticket to the show, which is what the whole thing's about, right? Like running on the same days, taking those fans from other people and things like that. We're streaming everything, so it doesn't really fucking matter, you know? Like, And half the time, it's like 8 in the morning when I'm at work or whatever anyway, so it's so rare I can watch it live. So it doesn't really affect me, and I can kind of watch everything delayed streaming, and it doesn't affect me. For the American fans who are in there, where they've literally got to vote with their dollars and choose between them, I know people who have bought tickets to both shows. They're not planning to go to both, but they want to support both companies. You know what I mean? That's that's pretty intense. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I ain't buying two tickets but, to nothing. But, but... I suppose so, but the, the main thing is that they should go and see the NGI. Is is that literally the same weekend as well? Yes, it's the same day. Mm. The, the the NGI 7 is the same day as the big expert of the NHB thing. Yeah, right. Was the ICW Texas show the same day as well, or was it? Elsewhere, or was it another day? The ICW Nose Bar Texas show was cancelled, and now they have put yeah. it forward to New Jersey. Yeah, I mean, when it was running, was so, that going to be the same day, or was it going to be like the yeah, next week yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be the same day. So basically, they've kind of fucked over the Texas fans, uh-huh. and uh, they're like, oh, yeah, it's fine, we're just going to run a show here now in some sort of building. Yeah. It's- Pretty bad. You're not a fan. I I'm I'm on ICW knows Bard Mark yeah. uh, and it, through and through, but I don't like people who just like I feel bad for the Texas fans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like I'm like, well, they've paid money and they're waiting and they're they paid money to go and see their show and they yeah. can't even ah, it's terrible. Well, I mean, that's bad. I mean I I can say I feel bad for the Australian fans i.e. me, because I was going to see Schlack. He was announced. You know what I mean? That was yeah, done. Yeah, the, yeah, the, stu- the stuff happened with, you know, that, that, the that's, LA that's stuff. Nice to know as far as, yeah. That's, uh, that's Danny DeMantle's fault. Yeah, he, he pulled the plug on it, uh, obviously, to make a statement. Uh, but then, 
The only well, only man, people well, that really man, get punished well, are the fans, right? Which is a, which is a real shame because I was very much looking forward to seeing my friend in real life and also yeah, like uh, and true, see, true, and yeah. seeing the and seeing them wrestle, you know. Uh, and I feel like he would have been a real big selling point for tickets. Slack is one of the biggest yeah, names so. in. The thing is as well, it's like, like next week, Slack is away to Japan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For for GCW. Yes. Slack's away to Japan for GCW and he's already making money. So, okay. Yeah. That's all good. Exactly right. If it uh, If it wasn't the way it was in Japan at the moment, I'd fly over to Japan to go see it. Because those shows would be absolutely killer. But how, how, do you, how do you have such a like a, a thing to Japan? Uh, it's pretty close to Japan. Like, uh, like yeah, as far as far as things go, you know, you can get like direct flights, basically, or at least one stopover. It's a lot closer than like America and things like that. And don't get me wrong; I mean, it's still an international flight, but for the right uh, right event, I would how, be. How, how much? How much though? Oh fuck! I I mean, in the golden era of like being able to go there before COVID and stuff like that, we've had some cheap flights there, man. Like you know, seven hundred and fifty bucks like to Japan and, and things like that. That's what it cost me to just go to the other side of Australia, <laughs> you know. But yeah, man, it's like uh, it, it's definitely not super cheap to get there and at the moment not super fun because you've got to have a chaperone and do all this stuff but that's going to be ending in october and uh we yeah we've never been afraid to travel for wrestling that we really wanted to see plus we would have the extra bonus of being in japan again which would be killer so if all those restrictions had ended in time to go see gcw and you know see those shows and you know uh catch slack live and you know, all they all these dudes that would have been super killer. But not meant to be. But it doesn't mean it will never be meant to be, you know. It'd be really cool. And I hope you get the opportunity to go to Japan one time as well because it, well, one time's all you need to be hooked because it's a it's yeah. really a great place. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But yeah, man, I want to thank you for your time, dude. It's been super fun hanging out with you. It's uh three thirty AM uh Perth, West Australia. I think it's about time for me to <laughs> get some sleep and fucking uh, do something responsible like uh, get up tomorrow and get fitted for a wedding, I think is the plan, which uh, I don't want to do. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Fair enough. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, nah, it's been awesome fun, dude. It's been super fun hanging out, and I'm glad you did that work of uh, running down a little list for us to work out and give us a whole bunch of topics. So, uh, Obviously, <laughs> anybody watching this on bleeding gums or or seeing another thing but we'll know where to find you but tell uh any of the faces feels listeners where to find bleeding gums just go on youtube type in bleeding gums mm-hmm. best thing to do is type in bleeding gums gcw because the minute you type in bleeding gums it just comes up loads of like like fucking like cunts like yeah dude, i did bleeding gums dude, wrestling dude. that works pretty well bleeding gums wrestling yeah, works pretty yeah. well bleeding gums wrestling or whatever yeah eventually i'll get to the point where i can just type in bleeding gums and it'll just work You'll just be the, the but, icon. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but for anybody who hasn't seen the channel, uh, all sorts of fun recap videos and things like that, as well as uh, Andrew just like, you know, running down his weekend of deathmatch stuff and uh, shows he's seen and things that he's liked and stuff. It's a, a really good watch. And uh, for anybody watching this who is not familiar with uh, my channel, it's at Faces Feels Cast. You can find us on social media everywhere uh, and on all of the, you know, podcasting places, Spotify, iTunes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, to listen to many of the interviews that you've heard us talk about today uh, with mostly the Deathmatch wrestlers that uh, I've been lucky Fuck enough yes. to give me my, my time. Our most recent uh, episode that I just released tonight was with the Kirk Dynasty the pairing and, you know, the couple that is uh, Casey Kirk and Brandon Kirk, the American Deathmatch champion and the Danny Havoc hardcore champion. As they drive to a baseball game, I'm on the phone talking to them and learning how it started and where it all has ended up. So, yeah, it was a fun, quick podcast I did with them recently and a lot more exciting interviews on the way. Anything else you got to spruik, my man? All I'm going to say is uh, go to Rise, uh, Rise or Die, October's October sixteenth, which is a Sunday, buy tickets. 
I'm sponsoring it. The guy that's a uh, explosion apparel sponsoring it. Uh-huh. Go and fucking see that show. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Be yeah. A fucking amazing main of fucking event. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, have Rise got up a streaming platform yet, or are they gonna be on YouTube once that's dropped? That's not for me to say. He does. <laughs> I, I, I would, I would, I would love, I would love for Rise to have something like that. Anyway, yeah. Support Rise's Patreon. Scott Rise's Patreon. Yeah. Pay like a couple, yeah. of, couple of bucks a month. Yeah. Pay for them. We're not here to spoon you feed you, motherfuckers. Figure out where to watch it. It's not on us. You guys yeah, just got to do it. So, get a plane ticket. Do what you need to do to watch that show. Be absolutely banging. And also in October, check out ICW No Holds Barred. And Deathmatch Down Under's four shows on their Australian tour um, from the 14th. Yeah, yeah. Your boy's going to be in the house, and it is going to be an awesome time. Watch out for any interviews I may drop leading up to that and then after that because it's going to be a good time. Dude, fucking good hanging out with you, man. We'll have to do this again sometime. Thank you, man. Absolutely. Perfect, man. Thank that, you. That sounds like a legendary plan. All right. So for... The amazing bleeding gums and four faces and feels. Remember, it's all about peace, love, and fucking deathmatch wrestling. So anyway, that was um, me and Rafe from Faces and Feels. Me being quite uh, quite intoxicated, can't even say intoxicated. I've had one beer, um, and in the process, I have made. I'm probably going to take these apart. I just want to see how easy it would be. Um, didn't take that long. I mean, I did burst the light tube, one light tube, not a big deal. I made. Four bundles, so out of 35 tubes, I got a Tokyo Tower and four bundles out of it, which ain't too bad. Obviously, the tape's not the best, it's a bit shoddy, but it's not moving. You know what I mean? This would be pretty good for a death match, and this is 22 tubes. 22 tubes inside this Tokyo Tower, so pretty fucking good. There we go. And uh, please don't ban the light tubes, because I enjoy doing shit like this. And um, light tubes are a big fucking part of deathmatch wrestling. It's not all there is to deathmatch wrestling. They want the tubes left to pry them at my cold dead hands. Because I can get fucking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tubes. For a little bit of money, but I can still get fucking tubes. So fuck all that shit. Anyway, uh, that was me and Rafe. Uh, being me being drunk and us talking about wrestling and all sorts of shit. Uh, hopefully we'll do one in the near future, and um, probably after the Rise NHB events, and we'll go through. And he's got his um, thing, dude. Where's my ring? He's involved with that. He's gonna be doing fucking all sorts of shit to do with that. Uh, so fuck yeah. So support Rafe and Faces and Fields, and support Deathmatch Down Under. Support um, fucking. Dude, where's my ring? Support Bleeding Gums. Uh, support fucking Rise and support No Holds Barred and support Deathmatch Wrestling. Woo! Tokyo Towers, baby. Or Eiffel Towers. Or, I don't know, kind of Empire State Building things? I don't fucking know. They need to get a better name for them, like in different places where they are. Anyway. Bucket. No Deathmatch. No life. Ta-ta. Until the next video, which will probably be out tomorrow by the time it'll be a short one where i go over the things of the year everything gets delayed 2023 fucking hell oh jesus christ don't hit the lights don't hit the lights the guy who slagged the football team those jobs are not for him he turns into a real estate agent who believes in discipline the guy who's first to use cocaine, the wild boy breaking free. He'll end up in a court of law as a prosecuting QC. Remember the school captain? Success was a matter of time. I can hear her now as she screams. Greg, you missed the stop sign. Forget Snoop Doggy Dog. Forget Old Ice Tea. The true word out on the streets is produced by the DAC. What's the use of striving? Last road in front of rebels. We get to do the driving. Don't choose the direction we travel. Stop
I just uh, decided to surprise you with that at the end. I was still recording it. I was like,